Welcome to episode 16 of the Irish Fitness Podcast. <laughs> Shane, where are we? <laughs> uh, we're in the RSC today, uh, Walford Regional Sports Centre, because this is where the famous Irish Fitness Championships takes place every July. So we said we come down and do a little uh, preview show. Nice little setup. Yeah. Nice little setup. The sun, the sun is out. Yeah. Uh, we've been guaranteed it for the IFC. So again, this, this episode is specifically dedicated to the Irish Fitness Championships. Um, we're going to give you a little rundown of the past, uh, talk a little bit about last year, and then, of course, uh, the 2020 season down here, which is going to be on the 3rd, 4th, and 5th of July. So, the IFC, Shane, you competed last year. Yeah, last two years. Um, love it. It's my favourite competition. I'm not just saying that because you run it. Yes, <laughs> yes. It's out of our gym, but uh, yeah, went from intermediate. Uh, my first ever competition was the IFC. And if, mm. I suppose if anyone knows me, I love it. I love competing. I love doing competitions and stuff like that. So, uh, did my first year intermediate. I think I came sixth, fifth or sixth overall. Did well. So did you made the then, final. Um, yeah, and then last year, then done my first RX competition, which was also three days long. It was the yes. first three-day competition we saw in the country. So yeah, yeah. First ever three-day comp, lads. Um, as my favorite competition I've ever done. Um, the whole experience of it, set up of it, was just brilliant. Thanks, uh, man. Appreciate from programming that. to everything else. No, not more enjoyable really and then the calibre of athletes as well yes yes we do we get a good crowd down here um, every year it's kind of a staple now of the summer calendar in the Irish CrossFit community thanks to all you guys thanks to everyone who's competed so um, what we're going to do today is I'm going to just give you a little brief history of the IFC um, and we'll take you back through the years Ro- what's it called Re- reeling in the years reeling in the years like RT the- yeah. <laughs> do you know the music <laughs> what's hum along oh, hum geez, the music I can't even think of it <laughs> We won't, we won't hum the music, we'll leave it at that. Uh, so, <clears throat> basically, just a little history of the IFC. Um, it used to be called the Stadium Throwdown. So, a little, a brief history of my uh, CrossFit experience. I started CrossFit back in 2009 in Perth, in Australia, in a gym called Southern CrossFit. Shout out to the lads. Uh, shout out to Southern CrossFit. And as soon as I walked in the door, the very first day, so I booked my my foundations and um, they do three like one-on-ones mm. over there um, I had signed up for a, a toy box and fight over there I was looking for some strength conditioning and uh, I was looking at all the you know the UFC guys and all yeah. that they were mixing weights with cardio with this with that and I had never seen anything like that before because I was into the traditional bodybuilding and mm. you do your running then as well so you do a couple of days weights to get ready for fights and martial arts and then you do a lot of road running and then you do obviously your sparring and yeah. pad work and stuff so um, I did a little bit of research on the internet and I found out what they were doing was CrossFit. So I immediately started Googling then, where is the nearest CrossFit gym? And it turns out there was there was a few of them over there. It was still a little bit in its infancy in 2019. So I found the closest one to me, which was Southern CrossFit, and I signed up for the foundations. And I, the first foundation I went into, I opened up the door, went into reception, and on the telly was every second counts. Oh. So it was the 2009 games, or 2008 games rather. And uh, it was, two, it was. hang on, let me see, it was around about May 2009 that I started. So it was just before the 2009 games. Mm. And it was kind of after when the movie came out and I think it was a DVD at the time. You couldn't buy it on fucking internet or whatever yeah, it was. No Netflix. Nah, there was YouTube and all that kind yeah. of stuff. but. Uh, DVDs were still actually in fashion. Shout out to DVDs. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to everyone on this show. So um, I went into reception and I was playing on the uh, the thing. So that was an immediate exposure for me to um, the CrossFit competition. Mm. And I was, you know, trying to get the DVD and all that kind of stuff. And I eventually, when I came back to Ireland, somebody was able to download it for me. Yeah. Back in the day, they put it onto a fucking DVD. But um, <clears throat> I instantly fell in love with the sports side of things yeah straight away i'm a competitor myself and um, i love to compete and uh, that was another avenue for it but it wasn't developed the way it is now mm. there was no open there was no local competitions there was none of that it was just the games and regionals very and gritty ranch type of, yeah, yeah there was there, there was what called sectionals so the instead sections, of the yeah. open there was sectionals that was like a small regionals <coughs> and then if you done well at sectionals, you went on to then regionals itself mm. and then obviously on to the games then. but it was a completely different format to what it yeah. is now. So uh, I saw this and I instantly fell in love with the sports side of things. So fast forward a little bit, came back in 2010 and um, set up CrossFit Waterford 
Um, we're coming up on our 10th year now, so we have big plans for that. So our 10th birthday is, yeah. is actually two months time. So April 2020, we're going to be 10 years old, Jeez. which is a big thing. Big thing for me personally yeah. and for you guys as yeah. well. So big Huge. thing. But um, I always loved the sports side of things. Watch the games religiously. The first games that they broadcast, I think, on the internet was the 2010 games. Mm. So I sat there for a fucking, I think I watched every second of that in 2010. Yeah. I'm stuck to the computer, I'm stuck to the laptop watching it. And <clears throat> a lot of it would have been out in, you know, the stadiums and stuff like that. So they had the running track, they had Sam Briggs on it. Uh, there was a, the first workout of the, the whole thing was a pyramid double helling. So it was like a 1200 meter run, yeah. 63 swings, 36 pull-ups. And then I went down in three different rounds. And I loved the look of the track. I loved it. I, I thought, fuck, Jesus, that's amazing. Um, and I always envisioned then after that doing something like that. Mm. So there, wa there wasn't many co competitions at the time in Ireland. There was only, I think, CrossFit Ireland had one. And uh, I think that was around about it. So um, I knew that this place existed, obviously. And I was training down here, doing running and stuff like that. And then I was thinking to myself, would it be possible to do an event down here? Mm. So this is pretty much the same setup as they yeah, had over I mean, in, like, in if, if you look before what Madison. you were doing, it was four walls of a gym. Yeah. And it was people training, but then it was like, let's do a competition inside the four walls of a yes, gym. Yes. There exactly. wasn't any of this stuff, gone, like what they were doing in California at the time, obviously. I think 2010 is the first year they went to California. Yeah. yeah. Um, from the ranch. They were down the ranch. In and then it just completely, I know they had, they had, they were doing some obscure stuff now. They were throwing, I think they were throwing like footballs over, <laughs> off GHDs and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like the Pyramid Hell and stuff like that, that was just, that's the start of the sport right yes, there. Yes, you know? yes. And then yes. obviously the year after that, then you have Rich Froning. Yeah, of yeah, 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 yeah. Like that. So uh, you basically started the Irish version of I tried, what I they tried. were doing over there. You know, there wasn't really I tried happy to be that, so. I tried to do as close as I could yeah. to it. Actually, the first workout of the 2010 games was um, um, uh, the snatches and the uh, muscle ups. I should know that. Amanda. Nine, Amanda. Yeah. It was a, it was a dedication um, <coughs> to uh, a girl that died of cancer. She died very young, and they named that after. So uh, it's like mistake. a famous one where Jason Kleeper couldn't snatch it. That's right. 60 yeah. <laughs> he got he could snatch it, but then he started getting fatigued. Yeah, yeah. And he was fucking running off with the bar. He nearly ran and into the had, stands. Um, Mike Bergener was a commentator, which I still wish was a thing. He yeah, was a commentator yeah, that was and brilliant. He, had such a, he, he did it last year. It was like a callback to like the old times and yes. games. But, um, I think it was a Max Clean they did yeah. um, last year. And it just went up, or it was like a clean ladder. Mm. Um, and they got Bergner to commentate on it. Yes, I remember that. Yeah, but yeah. he was to commentate on just regular crosses. He did. He if they just had a barbell in them. And it was he, so would, funny he, was, he was a very integral part. I'm sure he's kind of pulled back a bit now because mm. of his age and all that. But, yeah, but uh, his sons, they would now, I think, yeah, uh, yeah. Casey Bergner and... Uh, the Irish girl Sophie Cavan is yeah. on the cert as well, and uh, yeah, they, they do some good but, work uh, with it now. But he used yeah, to he be a famous quote now about Kalipa. He's like Kalipa's covering some real estate with that barrel. He was, yeah, yeah, that's it. When he ran he into, ran the into a cameraman, yeah, I think. Yeah. yeah, that was a great. great so that's kind of like uh, I'll show you where the sport came from, like ten years ago, yes. to where we're at now. From a little dusty ranch, uh, they did. You could rock up on the first two thousand seven games, the one yeah. OPT one. And you could basically choose any of the workouts that you wanted to do in whatever order you wanted over mm. the weekend. And they did stuff in the, the hopper, hopper and yeah. stuff like that. And Josh, uh, not Josh Bridges, Josh, Josh Everett, Everett was involved and stuff like that. So a fantastic history there. Yeah. And I, I researched all that. Mm. I wanted to see what was going on in the past, you know, what way was it going and all that kind of stuff. So I eventually came up with the idea of, okay, what about doing a competition on an Irish scale, obviously mm. not the same scale as the games, and uh, trying to get all the best people in Ireland down to do it. Mm. So um, I didn't want to do it. Obviously, I'd, I've never uh, organised a competition before. So what I wanted to do was I wanted to do like a tester first. Yeah. So I, I believe it was in June 2012, we had our first members competition and we did it down here. And if you look be behind you now, lads, I'm sure you're all familiar with the, the blue track. Uh, back then, it was actually an orange track, and um, they knew they were digging it up and replacing it with the blue track. So they were they left us drop all the weights on the uh, on the actual uh, track itself, which was yeah. fantastic. Um, I constructed a, a pull-up rig out of fencing, so <laughs> I chopped up a load of fencing, Jeez. put it all together, bolted it, and it, it did the job. You know, the bars were about that thick. Yeah. They were like fucking this thick, like that. Um, why anyone remembers it, but uh, it did the job, it held up and uh, we were able to do pull-ups and toes to bar and all that kind of stuff. And we had some of the, the people that, people will recognise them now, big names like mm. uh, Alan Burnell, uh, we had Colm O'Reilly there, 
we had uh, Owen McGregor, shout out to the boys, uh, Holly Deegan, which was one of our CrossFit athletes, she actually won it. Um, she almost made regionals a couple of times, shout out to Holly. Um, she had a real fantastic run of things. She was only like, I think it was when, when the Open started first in 2011, the top 60 people went to regionals. And Holly was like, for two years in a row, she was like 67 and Jeez, 69 very close, and very, very close. So she was almost a regionals athlete. Um, but again, it, the more it went on, then the harder it got to get there. Uh, we had Brendan and Hillary as well. Brendan, fantastic athlete, owner of uh, Gorilla CrossFit. And then Hillary, she was, uh, I believe she made regionals three or four times. Mm. So she was Ireland's top female for a long time, 14, 15 and 16, possibly 17 then as well. Uh, so we had a lot of top athletes down there uh, for the time, you know, and they went on to do whatever they want to do. And uh, I think we had in total around about 40 athletes, right. around about 40. So we had about 15 females yeah. and then about um, 25 males as well. And there was, there was no other divisions, only RX. <laughs> and the RX was like, I think we were doing 40 kilos overhead squats, which was, uh, you know what I mean? It was pretty light, but at the time, that's the way it was. Yeah, yeah. You know, there was no big fancy weights or anything like that. The sport was a completely different animal. It wasn't really a sport back then in Ireland. All it was was, <clears throat> basically uh, people just training like a group of people yeah and they all know each other yeah. um, I don't know even how we advertise I presume we advertise it through the Facebook and uh, people came and they signed up we mm. had a great time there was no vendors or anything like that yeah. I don't know that we sell tickets I think we did sell tickets for three euros a piece or something like that <laughs> crazy it's like feel the was, dreams yeah, yeah basically <laughs> build it and they'll come yeah. yeah it was just like just fucking around and yeah. seeing what could happen it's just that they get I always say it about like people, I suppose the one thing people talk about with CrossFit is community. Yeah. That, that's true, like everything. So like community now in CrossFit is more like people, regular people in the gym, mm. but there's still a community of like elite athletes, RX athletes, whatever. And that's what that brought. Yeah. So if you set up something, yeah, people want to be involved in that and they'll show up to you, you know what I mean? Yeah, there was, and basically that was it. Hey, we have a guest here. We have a guest, Keith. Hey, How are we doing, buddy? So uh, yeah, that's basically the history of it. We started back in 2012. Uh, we did our members competition first and then we went on to do the actual first one and it was called the uh, Stadium Throwdown, mm. the Waterford Throwdown, a lot of people called it. And uh, yeah, we had a good buzz, um, a lot of lessons learned. It was a one day affair, um, it was over pretty quickly. There wasn't that many athletes, I had yeah. no idea what I was doing programming <laughs> with a competition. Some would say I still don't, <laughs> but uh, I disagree. But um, yeah, it was a good old buzz. Uh, then in 2013, we took the year off because this magnificent new track was getting uh, put down and stuff. So obviously we couldn't do anything down mm -hmm. here. And then in 2014, then we came back, yeah. came back bigger. Uh, it was still an RX competition. Um, we uh, we opened it up and we got, I think it was double the athletes or a lot more. I think it was close to 100 or over 100 athletes. Um, Rob Flanagan, shout out to Rob, won it. And uh, who was the other girl? Linda Piper Roach, I think. She was around for a while. I think she was a coach up in Dublin. And um, yeah, it was a really good event. And again, it started getting better and better. And we started getting more people as the years went by. We did it in 16, 17, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So, you know, we're, we're coming up on nine years doing it, but this will be our eighth competition mm. this year. Um, Last year then, uh, we really went big on it. Um, we kind of reached out to all the top athletes in Ireland, didn't we? Mm. And um, I put up a nice little purse um, for the RX winners. Uh, we opened up more divisions. As the years went by as well, we added masters. We added uh, teams for the first time last year, which was very successful. Mm. Uh, shout out to all the teams. And uh, we really just tried to take it up a notch. Yeah, and you, you, can, I mean? you can see by the atmosphere down here, like. The first, like I was saying, the first year I did it, I only did it 18, 19, but uh, in 18 when I did it, it was just, I couldn't believe the atmosphere. Like I was mm. seeing photos on Facebook, obviously I'm only doing CrossFit since, she's basically end of 18, you know, that kind of way, mm. so, <clears throat> properly. So seeing that atmosphere and people who are just like, in, like into the sport as much as you are, uh, coming down here is exactly what you're going to get with that. You get that in most competitions, but down here is like a special kind of thing. It is, it's and special because the weather the is usually good. Um, the, the year I did first time, I think we had, we had a heat wave like we never had before. Mm. It was something oh, like man. high 20s. Uh, any Americans watching are probably laughing at us, but like we don't get that over here, especially oh. fair hair like me. So 
uh, and fair skin. But uh, I remember the sunburn, I remember the heat, the running, the 400 meter run, stuff like that. It's just a game changer. How's it going, buddy? Yeah, 2018 was definitely a special year in terms of the uh, the weather and stuff like yeah. that. It's phenomenal weather. Never seen anything mm. like that. People and then last year, then, all over the place. Last year then was a bit hit and miss. Uh, mm. I think we had one day of rain. One, there goes our hey. One day of proper rain. Um, and then, I don't know, it was kind of fine after that, I suppose. We kind it of was all right. Finish. We got on with it. Yeah. Over the last, say, uh, let me see, the last eight events, we've had maybe two or three days of rain. Mm. And everyone gets on with it. I put up a great uh, picture of Army there a few weeks ago. Shout out to Army. And I said, uh, when someone asked me, I get these messages every year. And it's, it's a legitimate question uh, from people who are thinking of entering and stuff like that. What do we do if it's raining out? And uh, the, the picture army, uh, you know, him, he's kind of sniggering like that. That basically sums it up. Not made of sugar. We yeah. will never not not train. We we might modify things slightly. Uh, we moved the snatch event up to the yeah, back of the gym last year. Yeah, that was a smart move now. I came down here and it was kind of everything was wet. I was like, all right, how are you going to do heavy squat snatch? Yeah, this? yeah, but, yeah. Uh, it probably wouldn't have been a good idea. With which only made for a better atmosphere because we went back up to the gym, smaller environment. Mm. I mean, you're doing a snatch and there's people literally a meter in front of you shouting yeah, at you. Yeah, you, know? you don't want to drop a fucking barbell on our head. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So. How's it going, boys? And, uh, yeah, basically, um, when it starts raining or whatever, there is, there's no, uh, okay, we, we have to call off the event. Mm. We might postpone it for a little few minutes. Uh, I think we switched around events one year. We had the, the lift first and then the Metcons afterwards, yeah. but we switched them. So we put the Metcons first yeah. and then we left people lift afterwards. So if you're ever wondering, uh, don't worry about the rain. Like, you're not, you're not made it's, of sugar, as I said to Ireland, people. You know, so. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's Ireland at the end of the day. People are going to um, complain about the rain or the sun. You know, so it's, it's either too hot or it's too, too cold. Too hot or too cold, too much rain or whatever. Ho hopefully we get somewhere in the middle. Yeah. Um, I used to work for my dad as an electrician. And uh, I started off when I was 15 working with him. I left school when I was 15. And uh, it'd be pissing out of the heavens. And I'd say, Dad, do we have to go out and get up a ladder? It might be, you know, a 40 foot ladder yeah. or whatever it is. And he'd say, What's wrong with you, boy? You're not made of sugar, are you? <laughs> and that's the way my attitude is towards competing down here. You know what I mean? If you're going to compete, then whether regardless, we're going to go ahead anyway. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, that's the way of it. Yeah. But um, last year, yeah, we, we decided for the first time ever in Ireland to extend. The, uh, the length of the competition, I put it to the vote on Instagram, and for the RX athletes, then they got a three-day competition. So we never saw that in Ireland before. Mm. Um, what did you think of that, Shane? Did you I, enjoy it? Yeah, it's phenomenal. Uh, obviously, I've only ever done one-day competitions, and none of them were even RX, because I wasn't in the sport so long, you know, but coming into that, I didn't, I'd never really get nervous about things. Uh, for that, I was just more excitement. Yes. And the more, I suppose, there's this, there can be a stigma around competing against games athletes. Because I know Mickey had booked his ticket to the games, mm. Army, um, Emma Quaid was there. So they were kind of like superstars yes, of the sport yes, in Ireland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They still are. The lads. Um, and even getting to share the floor with them, I thought was cool. Picking yeah. up points on them in workouts was cool. You know, being yeah, on, yeah, just yeah. challenging them and stuff like that. Uh, especially the, the Hinshaw workout was a memorable yes, one for me. Love like, that, love that. I, I just like running, uh, and those boys can run, you know. Mm. <laughs> uh, that's how you know they're legit athletes. Because like really, really good athletes would come down, they'd be really good at the chest bars and the muscle ups and moving a barbell, but legit athletes can do all that stuff, and then you ask them to do something way out of comfort zone, oops, hey. then it's it becomes this whole different thing of, are they like real games athletes? Mm. Are they are they training different domains? We different saw it, we saw it. The, the fellas was close, I think there was about six he finished on the last one, yeah. did you? Mickey was just. He was just off it, yeah, we're just pulling he, the rope. He came, he hit the, tri he hit, he hit the, the twine when I pulled it. Yeah. So if he had another split second, he would have made it. Yeah. And then the rest of you were just a little bit behind, but Emma, literally ran away with it shout out to Emma she was dominating the whole yeah, thing exactly. you could see her there as well she was perfect pacing um, she was going back and forth with uh, Michael Welch as well he was on the sideline so he was like coaching her through yeah. the running Michael is uh, big on running shout out to Mike um, so he was obviously telling her you know where he taught in the middle of the thing where she needed to pick up yeah and uh, it was just a real fucking you cool just see you could see top athletes working at their best you know yes, and, yes. and the best thing about three days i suppose is i know not all competitions have that kind of they can't do it not everyone can do that mm. uh, we, we like you have the opportunity to do it we're lucky here. we're lucky and we've three different venues as well yes which a lot, a lot of places have especially if it's in dublin and dublin's quite mm. dense and stuff like that whereas walford we're kind of lucky with we have kind of a city center and then we have places like the rsc wit arena as mm. well and then we have our gym so we're blessed, um, blessed, we're blessed with that kind of thing else. and then three days just gives it 
like a chance to vary the program. Even exactly. More, you know. Exactly. I think if you if you've been competing for a while in CrossFit, or maybe you're watching this and you haven't ever competed, but you want to do it, you want to do intermediate or scale or maybe an RX one if you haven't done that before. Mm. You're going to do three workouts at a competition. It's going to start at about half eight in the morning. You're not going to be done till five o'clock, and then you'll have to do a final if you make the final. Mm. Um, and that's just how it goes. Where if you think of our one, like we're competing for two and a half days, and then we're doing a final. So yes. like the variance of like that's what CrossFit is, it's constantly varied from fitness like. So mm. the variance of movements are there, you know, they have to be. Or else absolutely, absolutely. You can't program squat cleans, I don't know, two days in a row in the same competition, you can't program, you can't do thrust or twice, you can't do muscle ups mm. twice, you kinda of have to vary it. So that's where that's where you as I was saying, the really legit athletes will come to the top. The cream always rises. Um, and that's just what that kind of competition is showing. Exactly. I, I was excited forward, to yeah. have the three days and delighted the people did vote for that because it, it allowed me a more broad range with the program. Yeah. You know, we saw on day one, the D-boy carry up the hill. Never seen anything like that before, apart mm. from obviously the games. But it's very hard to replicate that yeah. in a, an arena. And it, it just you know the worst thing you ever feel in your legs. <laughs> <laughs> you it's fucking sent it on that one, man. I enjoyed lactic, watching that. Lactic acid. Yes, uh, yes. You're not you gonna did get that. well on that, Shane. Yeah. What did you get? I don't know, I've done it around two minutes or something. Yeah, you were up near the top on yeah, it, weren't you? That, that's something that would suit me now. Yeah, um, man. But like, you're not going to get that most places. You're no. going to get a gymnastic type workout. You're going to get couple one of triplets, machines. Maybe, yeah, a couple uh, of triplets, maybe a chipper. Yeah. Maybe an outdoor one if you're lucky, depends mm. on where you are. But something like that, you're not going to be running the hill with a D-ball. You're not going to be... We did another one that was, I think there was 75 burpees in the yes, workout itself. Yes, yes, Um 75 calorie row and yeah. dragging a sled up and down an astroturf. You know, you're just... The variance is there, you know, mm. and that's that's what the three days gave me the luxury of broadening the yeah. program. And again, if you're only testing, um, it's you're limited with a one day competition. Mm. That's just the bones of it. And there's nothing wrong with that. The top people will still come out. Yeah, for sure. But it's nice to test different modalities, exactly. and different time and zones, people deal with different energy staying systems. Staying in a hotel, being yeah. away from their home, and yes, that kind of yes, stuff. You know? yes. Um, not everyone's from Waterford, obviously. So I know there's people coming out from Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland's yeah, kind of our epicenter nearly of CrossFit now. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. The best athletes seem to be from, from the North. All the Nordies seem to be the best guys, best coaches and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah, it's they're traveling all the way down it, here. It? Like it is a different mm. part of the country. It's a bit like it's the other corner of the island. Mm. And they're staying in hotels for two nights in there. Do you know what I mean? They get to sleep schedule. They might be staying that. on the grass there uh, this year. Hopefully. <laughs> some camping going. Fingers yeah. crossed. There might be. There might be. <laughs> might be like Glastonbury. I haven't told the RNC yet, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try my best. I'm, I'm yeah. going to try my best, but by the time this comes out, I will be at the sorting it. Yeah. But uh, what I would like to do is, so we have this big pitch behind us. Obviously, that's not um, an option to camp on, but there's other grass places across the mm. way. Now, I wouldn't recommend it for an athlete to be staying <laughs> in a tent all night, but uh, I would definitely recommend it for the spectator. So the plan is with that, right, if we can swing it, uh, we'll have tents and um, we'll get a security guard down. The gates will be locked up. You can order in pizza or you bring your own food. I'm going to try and set up a TV as well with maybe a bit of Netflix. So in the night time, they can sit down and they can watch, uh, you know, uh, every second counts or yeah. whatever the fuck it is. So that's a good one. Uh, keep an eye out for that, guys. Um, yeah, so the, the plan for 2020, we had a great year last year and we're going to try and bring it another step forward mm. again this year. Uh, what we've done with the qualifiers, it, it sold out pretty much instantly last year. There was a few Masters tickets and all that kind of stuff, but I didn't anticipate how quick it was going to set out. And I don't think a lot of other people were, so anyone didn't get in last year, um, my apologies, but uh, hopefully we can get more divisions in this year, which we're going to talk about now in a minute. And obviously as well, make sure that on the 4th of uh, April, I think it is, at 8 p.m., that you're ready to buy your tickets, because they will go they like that like the last door, yeah. year. I've never yeah. seen anything like it. Um, yes. Luckily for the RX people now this year, or some of them. Invites. So, yeah, so the plan is we're going to have 40 male places for RX and we're going to have 30 female. And the top 30 in the open get first refusal. Okay. So they get the first refusal for that. Um, so if you're top 30 in the open, uh, we will be contacting you next month and you will be able to purchase your tickets, so which is handy. And then the remainder of the places then will go on public sale with all the rest of the tickets. Um, so that's the RX. Um, another thing that we're going to do this year is we're going to introduce two new divisions. So um, I think we've talked about a lot of stuff. Always in CrossFit, there's gymnastics and there's bar work. Mm. So there's a mixture of the two. And it favours, uh, so obviously the, the, the weights and stuff favour bigger, stronger athletes, mm. and then the gymnastics favour smaller athletes. Yeah. And then there's this kind of in-between, which is the perfect crossfitter, you know what I mean? Say 5'10", 
80 to 85 kilos is kind of males mm. and then around about say five six around about 60 to 65 mm. kilos for females i would say 58 to 63. um so i always thought to myself why couldn't we have just barbells and weights and rowing to favor the big guys mm. and then have the opposite end of the spectrum then of just gymnastics and running and you know what i mean double unders or whatever stuff yeah, to favor us yeah. yeah body weight stuff so this year First time I've seen it. I know they do body weight stuff, as in they weigh you, and the bars are a percentage mm -hmm. in some of the competitions. I've done it in the past down here as well. We put everyone on the scales. Anyone that did 2014 and 15, you remember lining up over there, a big liney on the scales, and they had to weigh in. And then a, whatever weight they were, we took a percentage of that, and that's what their cleans would be, yeah. or whatever it was. Claxton had to do like 100. And, five kg power cleans and then there was other fellas there with 75 banging them out so it was like max cleans in two minutes or something like that At body weight yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so basically what we're going to do is we're going to give people the opportunity to be specialists there's nothing wrong with being a specialist and um, that's what i think and they have no avenue for it so the big the big horses or whatever you want to call them get to do their body their barbell ninja and it'll be like uh, basically all barbell movements are on the table dumbbells hopefully d balls as well uh, there'll be rowing as well, maybe some carries, things like that. So basically anything that favours a bigger athlete. Then the bodyweight ninja one will be the exact opposite. So yeah. you'll have toes to bar, pull-ups, um, you'll have all the bodyweight movements like burpees, box jumps, running, double unders, you know, things like that, mm. things that favour the, the smaller athlete. So uh, that's the plan for that, so keep an eye out for that. There'll only be 10 tickets in each, so be oh, careful okay. with that. Um, the other divisions then we have our regular ones starting to get a bit windy here folks storm brewing up yeah now. there's a storm brewing up um so right so we're back hey where are we shane <laughs> <laughs> still in the RSC. so basically we're still in the rsc but we had to turn the camera around because it's getting real shitty out there and uh, we don't want to get wet or cold because we're pussies just talking about the weather yeah. <laughs> the weather is uh, a little bit temperamental this time of year but um, we'll get on with it anyway so uh, where were we Shane? we were talking about the different uh, divisions, divisions wasn't yeah. it yeah so basically we have all the same divisions on the table as last year there's going to be the masters uh, scaled and rx there'll be intermediate teams uh, same sex uh, scale teams and then the scale and intermediate divisions now last year we had a poorer kind of uh, not a poorer but some of the divisions are there's not they're not that popular right so what we're trying to do is we're trying to make it um, as competitive as possible so if you want to be a scaled master then we need a minimum of 10 people per division yeah. if not we're going to meld the divisions so basically what we're going to do is we're going to put uh, the 35 39 we're going to do that anyway with the scale one but the rx females there's not that much of a call for it. so if you are an rx female uh, get yourself together you know call our mates whatever it is and uh, let's make that division strong mm. and we'll get a minimum of 10 people so we I can think run there's it. definitely a market for the RX female. It's just mm. a step up to RX. Because you go to an inter big, you go to an inter jump. female uh, competition that's individual say mm. and there's a lot of them there. Mm. And there's a few of them who are kinda like just just on that mark of uh, bringing it up to RX. Yep. But uh, some fantastic RX females though. Yeah. It's like a Beck Thompson um, Lisa, uh, yeah, there's Amanda, obviously, shout out to Amanda, Carol Brennan, you know, they're all mm. solid females, and whoever else was down here as well. So I think we could definitely get 10 per thing. Yeah. We'll see how it goes anyway. It's basically just a call to all female masters. We never have any issue with the 40 plus males or the 35 plus mm. males. You know, there's always, if that, and there's too many of them, yeah. you know, to get into it. Um, so definitely, if you're an RX female watching this, uh, sign up please because I, I love to see that division you know it's a very competitive division yeah. I'm a master myself we definitely have the quality of athletes so uh, get together and uh, sign up to keep that division strong um, yeah so basically that's all the division two new divisions there with our bodyweight ninja and our barbell ninja and um, we have loads of vendors and sponsors on board Ollie has come back on again this year they're going to be hooking up with our, our judges tees and our volunteers tees always great quality uh, shout out to Ollie and Louie. Um, then we have super vendors, loaded deadly vendors. 
We have a load of vendors this year. We have no go concept. Hit coffee are coming back down to us. Skip. Fantastic product. Uh, pro performance nutrition. So you can get some really quality, high quality meals and stuff like that. Um, we, for the first time ever, we can actually get a haircut down here as well. Um, as I said, I might get a little line up on the fade. It's uh, alpha male barber. Shit, you can go through that with us. You're all right, boys. That's water for the FC there, I think. <laughs> so, yeah, for the first time ever, I've never seen it at a competition before. You can actually get a haircut a as haircut well. haircut in a tent, yeah. I'm not Why sure not? if he does perms or uh, <laughs> dreadlocks for the ladies, but the, def the fellas can definitely get their fade lined up. Uh, they'll have their, uh, you're all right, buddy, grand. Don't worry about it. We're intruding on your ground. Um, so, yeah, there's going to be a lot of different vendors. We'll have our usual bouncy castle for the kids. Kids go free if they're under 16. Uh, we'll have our face paint. We'll have our kids work out. Um, that's always a great thing on a Sunday, isn't mm -hmm. it, to get, to get the little ones involved as well. And we have some, I'm throwing around some other uh, kind of mad ideas as well. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm in the mad. You all right, buddy? Do you want to get out there? You might see someone on stilts walking around or uh, an old clown or something like that, Pukey the Clown. So there's a lot of different things we have uh, going on, you know yeah. what I mean? So um, as always, it's a good weekend. from one of our friends in a kind of a, a regular gym, then we can, yeah. he, su he suggested, he said, why don't you do um, a division for uh, just regular gym goers? So I was thinking to myself, yeah, geez, that sounds like a good idea. So we had originally planned on, all right there, but we had originally planned on doing one, a separate division for teams of four. So we'd have two females and two males. And uh, we got a lot of, interest through the page and stuff like that and there was you know people trying to say it and then i was thinking i don't really want to clutter up the uh the ifc with um a load of non-crossfit uh, divisions yeah. or whatever you know what i mean i like the barbell ninja and i like the gymnastic one because uh, that's part of the crossfit but at the same time um having um a load of global gymmers running around the place uh, probably wouldn't do anything for the event yeah you know what i'm saying yeah. There's nothing wrong with it or whatever, but it wouldn't add to the experience of the IFC. So I said to myself, I thought about it for about a week, and I said, um, why can't we have a separate kind of event for them? So I sat down, planned it out, and uh, the good news is we're going to go ahead with it, but we're going to have a separate event, and we're going to call it the Irish Fitness Games. So it's going to be the first ever fitness competition that I know of. I think FlyFit did something small, but this is going to be on a national scale and it's going to be for the regular gym goers. So if you're a boot camper, if you're in a fitness class, if you're doing you know, any kind of strength conditioning or whatever, uh, maybe not so much the weight side of things, it's going to be very accessible. It's going to be teams of four, yeah. two males, two females. There'll be things like running, rowing, uh, maybe some light dumbbell work, maybe carries, you know, things yeah. like that. Things that you would see in your, your regular uh, class, you know, things like burpees, yeah, box book, jumps. Yeah, camp style movements that are just accessible to the public. Yeah. And not anything that you'd see in CrossFit that are, I don't know, putting something over your head, like squatting, mm. or where you're putting yourself to a rig or anything like that. It'd just mm. be accessible movements, picking up stuff, carries, working as a team, I think is the main thing. Mm. And that's what people want to do. Uh, that's why it's so popular in CrossFit. So a separate event for that mm. would work a charm. Uh, basically having, I don't know, a worm, a log, moving some awkward object. Mm. Um, and there's a lot of possibilities with it, isn't there? Yeah, and there's people in gyms now that have, outside of CrossFit that are training in gyms, like we're talking about our friend Ken, mm. <coughs> trained these gyms for 10, 12 years with mm. the same coach. Yep. And they know people like their family, you know, like in their, in their classes with them. So, there's definitely a market for it, and uh, it's been popping up in CrossFit, these fitness divisions, mm. in and out, and I suppose it's it's still CrossFit, there's still, mm. that's people from affiliates and CrossFit gyms that are doing those divisions. But it's fitness have something tests. separate, like, like what we're doing here, the fitness games will be just, it's, it's after mm. the, our throwdown down here, and then it'll be a completely separate thing. Yeah, just it's, for them, it's not so. going to interfere with the IFC at all. Yeah. Uh, we'll have it two weeks <laughs> after, it's going to be in the weight arena, one day competition. Um, three workouts over the day, and uh, the, the winning team then will be crowned the, the Irish Fitness Games champions. Mm. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. Um, we won't be broadcasting about it anymore on the Irish Fitness Podcast. As I said, this is for CrossFit and functional fitness rather than that, so we don't want to overcrowd it yeah. with that, you know what I mean? If you want to check out that more, it's on 
uh, IG and Facebook under Irish Fitness Games. So it's going to be a great weekend. Um, any sponsors or vendors want to get involved as well, give me a shout and uh, we can hook you up. Concept are on board, which is fantastic. I'm delighted. Shout out to, Sha shout out to Sam. Share, 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 share. So Sam is coming down. They're going to be uh, helping us out with that, uh, George's T-shirts and all that kind of stuff. And if you want any more info on that, uh, feel free to slide into my DMs. Or if you want to give Shane a buzz as well, he can help you out. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, Shane. Yeah, that's it now, I think. That's all it's the stuff we covered today. Um, we're going to be, uh, you know, filming down here on the uh, actual weekend as well. So um, if you're an athlete or even a spectator and you want to get on the podcast, mm. that's a good opportunity, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, we can drag a few people off the floor maybe after yes. our workout when they're breathing hard and ask them their immediate reaction. Yeah, them, that's a know? good idea, man. Uh, it's a great idea. It might be a funny one, you know. Yeah, yeah, people absolutely. with the heart rates up are almost like people who are drunk sometimes. They don't know yes, what you're going to get yeah, out. Yeah, they don't so. know what the f wad drunk. That's wad drunk, yeah. It. So it'd be cool. I don't know, we might rip a few games athletes off the floor if we have mm. them down here. And, you know, some get, and then might do... Uh, someone who's never done cross before, just down here for the first competition yeah. or down for a look. We we'll do a few interviews on. with a few people anyway. Yeah, for sure. And we'll have some notable people here anyway, um, as in coaches and athletes. You know, yes, the, yes. Athletes come, the top athletes come, the coaches come with them most of the time. So. Yeah, yeah. Emma's confirmed, Mickey is confirmed, Army's confirmed. Uh, we will be contacting a lot of the rest of you over the next few weeks now to see how you're fixed. Um, all the champs go free from last year. And uh, that's about it, lads. Mm. All right, until then. Uh, this is episode 16 of the Irish Fitness Podcast. Um, we will be back probably later on this week with episode 17. Until then, guys, take it easy.